We've made it halfway through the week. How you doing? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Wednesday, July 24th. Now, I should probably remind you that I got my live streaming event this week. Tomorrow, Thursday. Do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my friend and co-host Taylor, we go on live for about 90 minutes, taking requests from viewers like you. You got a stock you want to share? Bring it on. Drop the ticker in the comment box. I'll go over the information. Taylor will cover the charts and we'll give you our two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, I do go by first come, first served, and I do announce this video earlier in the day about lunchtime. Well, as soon as I drop that announcement, tickers start coming in, and by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I normally have all the tickers I can handle. Which didn't seem fair for those of you that come to the show on time, drop a ticker, and I don't have any time for you. Eh, I'm not liking that. So I've tweaked this a little bit. I'm going to take six stocks before the show, and then I'm going to save two stock slots for during the show. So drop your tickers during the show. We're going to choose two. And the way we're going to choose them, whoever has the hottest chart. That's what we're looking for. Hot penny stocks. So bring on those hot charts, folks. That's going to be 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I do on this show is I share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that are on every single market. There's lots of them out there and I'm looking for a hot one. So how do I narrow down all that research? Because there's over 10,000 of them. Well, I don't do it by going to the filings and the press releases first. That's a lot of reading. I'm a day trader. I like to get in and get out quick. I don't want to spend the whole day reading. So normally I go to the charts. I can look at a lot of charts quickly in a small amount of time. And literally at a glance, I can see a pattern of a breakout or a strong surge or big bounces. No reading involved. I'm just looking. So at a glance, I can see heat. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I go through that company's press releases and filings, looking over information for the last 30 days. A hot chart doesn't need to have fresh catalysts. Even a stale catalyst can get it going. Once you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And with that in mind, we are taking a look at KIT, ticker K-I-T-T, -T, Nauticus Robotics. Now, my primary focus in on this hot penny stock is her chart. It's in a precarious position right now. To most people, it really wouldn't look good. She's been in a downtrend for three years. She just hit an all-time low, which isn't surprising. She's had a lot of all-time lows as she's been falling. She just keeps getting lower and lower. So why are we looking at it now? Well, first off, the chart has a setup. It's got this curve going to it right now, and it looks like it's in recovery because after it hit that new all-time low, she did a reverse stock split. A big one, one in 35. Now, this company's in pretty decent shape. Their fundamentals aren't perfect, but they're cash strong, and the company's making progress. And the stock now has shareholder value. Sitting on the table at an all-time three-year low, it looks like it's ready to start climbing, break that 200, and give us some profits. That's why we're looking at it. So, Kit, she finished today at $3.65, a penny for each day of the year. She's up uh, just a little over 11.5% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock in the major exchange, coming with that variety of benefits you don't get on the OTC market. One, free to trade, no transaction fees on the major exchange. Two, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never, ever do that on the OTC. Though some get to, we don't. Three, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. Compared to the OTC, that's a drought down there. And four, not to be overlooked, there's a lot of extra rules up there that keep these companies honest, which keeps us safe. That's why I like penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is KIT all about? Well, they tell us here that Nauticus Robotics develops ocean robots as well as cloud software and services to the ocean industry. The company offers Aquanaut, 
an autonomous underwater vehicle with a suite of sensors, which provides capabilities to observe, inspect subsea assets or other subsea features. Another one of their products is Olympic Arm. This is an all electric manipulator designed for a variety of intervention tasks on work class remotely operated vehicles. We're talking about an underwater robot that has arms and fingers that can use a screwdriver and put in screws for you. It's that detailed. They have a third product called Toolkit. This is their software platform that all of their hardware runs on, which consists of interrelated products for ocean sensing, manipulation, autonomous behaviors, survey, search and recovery, that would be a great one, and manual intervention. Now, we're not going to go too deep into it because there's a lot that they can do, but I am over here at their website, nauticusrobotics.com, just to get your brain thinking about it. Anything in the water they can work with. So you got these uh, offshore wind generators. Well, there's a lot of wiring. There's a lot of uh, generators sitting on the ocean floor, actually, that harness all of this power before it's sent. These robots monitor all of that. Speaking of monitoring, this is perfect for defense and security, whether it be around cities, in rivers or oceans, it doesn't matter. These robots can connect to each other, you know, through communication, and they can work with sonar or radar or whatever it is that they work with and create a security fence, a no trespassing zone. And God only knows what else they could do. They're also working with aquaculture, aqua farms. Now, I'm not quite sure what they're doing here, but in these open farms, they're growing crustaceans or fish, and these robots are helping them out in some form and fashion. And one of the big industries that are really benefiting from this is offshore oil and gas. There is a lot of things under these things that have to be watched and monitored all the time. And we're going to see in the news right now, they're dealing with a huge oil rig company out of Brazil. So that gives you an idea of what they're doing. Let's take a look at the news. Now, there's not a lot of news here. So I did some scrounging around and I did find some extra news I want to share with you. Now, I've got two pieces here. We're going to be taking a look at one that came out in May. This was results from their first quarter financial for this year and then in July. And then we have that most recent piece of news of the reverse stock split, 1 in 36. Now, the first piece of news I want to share with you came out October of last year when the company acquired 3D at depth in an all stock transaction. They executed a definitive agreement to acquire 3D at depth, a global leader in commercial subsea laser LIDAR. This is for inspection and data services, and they acquired this company for about $34 million in an all stock transaction. Now, they give us some information down here about 3D. 3D has broad customer relationships, including several companies in Nauticus's sales pipeline. Nauticus will assume 11 patents from the company. And 3D is a revenue-generating company. In 2022, they generated $9.8 million with a 60% profit margin. That's what we want to see. And they projected 20% growth in those revenues in 2023. Now, we don't have any more breakdown information because they're together now. They're working together. Jumping up to the next piece of news. This one comes out May 13th. This is the results for their first quarter financials. And we're not primarily here for the numbers. We'll grab a couple, but I'm here to show you the progress. The company's been involved with a lot of tests and they are now completing these tests, which is actually starting to generate revenues for them. They tell us here that they are expecting to be generating daily revenues from the Aquanaut Mark II vehicle beginning in Q3 2024. In other words, right now. And they have a strong queue of new opportunities developing. Now, some of their operational highlights here, just glossing over them. Vehicle 2 testing. Nauticus tested its flagship AUV Aquanaut Mark II in the Gulf of Mexico during Q1 of this year. The test boosted confidence in the vehicle being capable of generating daily revenue in Q3 of 2024 from existing contracts. They've had customers waiting in the lurches for these and now they're satisfying them. Vehicle 1 
The testing of Vehicle 1 is expected to begin in Q2, which is now over, with Florida Atlantic University. This is expected to reduce Nauticus's monthly certification costs by up to 90%. Now, I don't know what it is, but it's a monthly fee, and they're going to save 90% on it by having the university do these tests. They've got something going on with Vehicle 3 here, but ultimately, my point, they're making money. Day rates for services, including the vessel, personnel, and Aquanaut vehicle, are expected to be between $25,000 and $70,000, depending on the depth, duration, and distance from shore. Now, the numbers I want to grab you come here. As of March of this year, the company had cash and cash equivalents of $6.2 million. Think of that as money in the bank, money they can use, compared to less than a million just seven months ago in December. So in the last seven months, they have acquired more than five additional million dollars to add on to what they had. But that ain't all. In Q1, the company closed additional financing of $13.3 million to provide liquidity needed for operations and testing. So what? We're up to virtually $20 million now that they've got to use. So yes, they do have stockholder deficit. They are holding some debt, as you would expect with a high-tech company working with hardware. They got to manufacture all this stuff, buy all of the supplies, build them before they even sell them. So they've got to put a lot of money out front right now. And that last piece of news, again, showing you the progress. Now, there's a lot of details here, and I'm not going to go through it all, but I do want to show you that they've made strong headway hitting a milestone here. They tell us that the company announces the successful completion and invoicing of phase one in its transformative four-phase contract with Breville's largest offshore oil and gas operator. This milestone concludes part of the contract that was awarded in 2023. Well, first off, we see they're working with Brazil's largest offshore oil and gas operator. That's big right there. And they say they just hit a milestone. Now, I'm not sure if they're talking figuratively or literally. Are they just patting themselves on the back and saying, Phew, we made it this far, keep trucking? Or did they actually get some pay for getting to a certain point? They tell us here that they have just achieved a crucial victory by finalizing the engineering and proof of concept documentation for the Aquanaut Mark II vehicle. This documentation details the advancements and the capabilities of the Aquanaut ensuring it meets the stringent requirements of the 10 core functionalities essential for offshore deep water field inspection and light maintenance tasks. In other words, they customize this robot for their customers. The customers wanted 10 functionalities, whatever they are, and they have just completed it. Now they give us a little bit of insight to where they're going. Nauticus is now forging ahead with phase two, technology integration, and phase three, controlled environment testing, which are being executed concurrently through an interactive approach as new vehicle capabilities are developed and integrated. And finally, phase four, field qualification test. This is slated to be performed in Brazil, bringing the project to a full circle. But when? <laughs> when do we close the circle? We've got a lot more here. They just completed phase one, which is a big deal. They've got phase two, three, and four to go through, but they don't give us any timeline here that I could see. But the bottom line is, even though we don't have catalysts, we have progression. The company has revenues now that we can start counting on. They're doing more business. They've moved from defense contracts to commercial contracts. So things are looking good for the company, and that's really all you need. Not to mention, we've got a 1 in 36 reverse stock split, which is now given us shareholder value because there's just less shares. All right, let's take a look at the company's relative volume for the day. Well, that's interesting. We got nothing for, well, the month. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe because of the split. Today, we did almost a million shares, 951 million. To get the volume, we're not going to get an average. We're going to get exact numbers here. We are at Yahoo Finance looking at Nauticus robots. All you've got to do is click that historical data here. 
and you can get every day's activities for the company stock. Every day, you can see what it opened at, what it closed at, the high and low of the day, and the volume. And I went back a couple months and I saw she was doing a couple thousand shares a day. Then she went up to a couple tens of thousands. She then started working her way up to a couple hundred thousand with a million spike here and there. Then she did jump up into the millions for a little over a week before she dropped back down into the hundreds of thousands. And right now she's puttering between hundreds of thousands and a million. So she isn't really showing any trend right now. I just like the chart because it's set up after a all time low and a reverse stock split. It just seems like good timing. Jumping back to the information for the company. There you go. After our 1 in 36 reverse stock split, we have an outstanding share count of 1.7 million. Folks, your float can't be any higher than the outstanding share count, and a low float is constituted at about 10 million. Well, what would we constitute anything from 1.7 down? Super duper low. This is an excellent float now, folks. We have shareholder value because there's fewer shares on the table. The price is up. Yes, it's up because of the reverse stock split, but you know what happened when they pushed the price up? They put it in front of different people that haven't seen this company before. People who have more money. When you're selling a sub penny stock, people who are looking for two, three, four, five dollar stocks are never looking at a sub penny stock. Well, this company's got great technology. They need to get in front of people who are willing to invest in this company. And that's where we sit right now. So off of this reverse stock split and an all time low, I'm thinking buyers are going to come in because this company's got something to offer. Market cap for the company. We're at about 5.6 million after the reverse stock split. Financials. Oh, those aren't very pretty now, are they? 2021, we had $8.5 million worth of revenues. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. They kicked that up to 11.5 million in 2022 and then dropped almost 50% down to 6.5 million at the end of 2023. But look at the profit margin. That company they just got getting 60% profit margin. That's what we need because this stinks. They did 6 million here and they lost 5.3 million. That's not good math. Let's take a look at their quarterlies. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. it just got worse. A year ago, we were at 2.8 million. Just last quarter, we were at $464,000. But look, when we were making almost $3 million, we were only losing $100,000. Now we're only making a half a million and we're losing three times that much. Things have got to change here, folks. Take a look at that balance sheet for the company. Bringing over those three zeros, cash and cash equivalents, what we like to call the bank. We got 6.2 million in there. Total assets, we're up there at about 30 million. Yikes, total liabilities. More than double that. We're at like closer to 69 million, which means we are holding stockholder deficit in this company. Not crazy about that aspect of about 39 million. Now, this company may turn around in the long run, become a nice company with stockholder equity. She could be a long hold, but I'm a day trader. I'm looking at this for the chart. I just want to make sure the company's strong enough to lift the chart up. Everything looks good to me. It's not a perfect fundamental, but she's cash strong. She's got about $20 million to keep the company moving forward. That's all we need. More progress. Jumping into those disclosures. I do believe we already looked at these. Well, I mean, you know, I went through them and thought if there was anything important, I'd share it with you. These Form 4s, Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. We're only interested primarily when they buy them or sell them. These are neither, not buys or sells. What they are getting are restricted shares for common stock. That is from a deal from 2022. So they can't do anything at these restricted shares. They're just being issued now and they're going to hold them when they can use them. They will.
And then we got a bunch of 8Ks, which we've already covered in the news. Just to mention it, she does have a warrant. A warrant is attached to the company. When the company has news, the warrant normally runs as well. The warrants are normally a lot cheaper. This is down here at just over two cents. She was down today 6%. Warrants bounce harder and faster than the company stock does. And it doesn't take much volume to do it. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, that's normally all you ever see on a warrant. You don't see millions of shares. But people like to trade these as stock. So when the company has big news and starts to move on the chart, the company may go up 50%. The warrant could easily go up 300%. So if you're interested in the warrant, just throw a W at the end of the ticker and that gives you the warrant. All right, let's go take a look at the chart for Kit. So we're going to chart Kit on my free trading platform, TOS. That's Think or Swim. We got Nauticus opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, but I am zoomed in on it right now. I primarily wanted to show you what the big deal is to me. It is this hook right here. She was going sideways, dipping ever so slowly, and then she started to fall when news came out that this reverse stock split was going to happen. She hit an all-time low down here. Then she had her reverse stock split, and off of these two terrible things, she is now starting to bounce and climb because there's shareholder value sitting on the table. Now let's back out a little bit and get a true perspective of what's going on here. All the numbers you see have been multiplied by 36 now. So our low of $2.65 has to be divided by 36 to show you the true number, as does our high. It says six months ago we were almost $70. No, we weren't. Divide that by 36. That's what the high was. Now, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, folks. Three years ago, this company did a merger with a SPAC. It was $10 a share. That's why she's going sideways. The shares don't move in price much until a deal closes. Well, this is when it closed. Well, her price was between $10 and $11. They tell us it was $357 and she jumped up to $468. No, she did not. She jumped to about $13 before she came crashing down. Folks, if you see numbers that just don't look right, they look too magnificent to you, go see if they've done a reverse stock split. Now, you could do it the hard way. Go through all of their filings, looking at every single 8K, not knowing when or where to look. Or you could do it the quicker way. Go to Google, put in the ticker and the name of the company, and two more words. The word split and the word consolidation. That'll tell you if they've had a split. And if you see one, that's the number you have to divide all of the other numbers by to get to the real numbers. And here's the sad part, folks. This isn't a temporary change. This is permanent. These numbers are going to be here forever. So two years from now, when a new investor comes along and looks at this company and wants to see what their all-time high is, they're going to see $468 and not have a clue the chart was adjusted because they don't put like an A up here in the corner or something to let you know. You've got to do your homework. So let's come on down now to that six-month, four-hour view. Here they tell us our high was $70, divide by 36. She was in a serious downtrend here, deep underneath her 200. The 200 was falling, and once it got close to the price, we start seeing some initiative here. She's starting to spike through it, but it really is still too steep for her to be trying to break out. If she gets up on top of it and tries to stay up there, she's going to fall, and she's going to come down hard. I've got a couple of SNRs drawn up here, supports and resistances. These are going from about uh, 430, 520, and 608. And our price currently looks to be somewhere around $3.65. Now, we had a big strong run here on June 10th. I went looking. I could not really find anything to talk about for why she is jumping here, but she had a nice rip. She jumped from, well, looking at their prices, 578 up to 1550. So you're looking at roughly 300%, regardless of what the numbers are, from here to there is roughly 
She came back down. She bounced off of her 200, looking good. She was looking flat, but that wasn't enough. She came back down to this low support down here at about 430, 35, and she's been stuck down here until recently when she poked up real hard and then dropped real fast because everybody knew the reverse stock split was coming. Hitting this all-time low of $2.65, we had a reverse stock split, and now she is starting to climb. Now, I'm not saying she looks super duper hot right now. I'm just saying it's a hot situation. There is shareholder value sitting on the table now, 36 times more than there was the day before the split. Our oscillators say that she is growing. Our PPO is climbing. Our MACD is climbing. Our ISA currently, because of this aftermarket activity, is dropping. But if you watch my videos, you probably noticed that pattern there. My PPO is going up, the blue line, and my ADX trend continuation is falling. Here, there you go. They're spreading apart. And as long as they continue spreading apart, it is a 100% guarantee that your price is rising. So I like to watch these two spread. And as soon as one of these lines changes direction, it stopped climbing. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we can see volume has definitely been strong since the drop. We've had a lot of volume in here, selling and buying. She was going sideways above that strong support, took that jump here off of the 200-day, went through all of our strong resistances here, actually broke this one, which is up at about 610, came all the way back down, crashed, and is now bouncing. All of our SMAs are starting to work around. We've got to wait for all the SMAs to hit their bottom and start coming back up. That's when you start climbing. Well, our 20 is already turned. Our 50 is flat starting to turn. We're waiting for the 200 haul, which to you is invisible because I know most of you don't have the 200 haul, H-U-L-L, -L, on your charts. And you should because penny stocks and the 200 haul are buddies. The 200 haul is like your 200-day SMA. It's got as much authority and as much power. The difference between the two the 200 haul and the 200 MA both take 200 days of prices and average them together. But the 200 haul then puts more credence on current prices. It can relate to the current prices. So the price pays attention to the 200 haul. And when this changes and starts to climb, I expect the price to come very close down to it and bounce off of that 200 haul to give it the catapult and push it needs to climb up to the 200. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for here, folks. Not no cup and handle, not a recovery. That all time low and that 36 reverse stock split have changed the game here for the stock and the value of the stock to the shareholder. Our oscillators on our one hour chart are a little weaker. We are pulling down here after market. They were crossing over, starting to climb, all of them, but they are pulling back at this very moment, which I kind of expect some volatility as she's pushing up. Five day, five minute. Here's our high of 616 above our strong resistance, falling all the way down to our reverse stock split and our all-time low. And our 200-day SMA is now starting to climb. Our price is respecting it. She got up on top, hit this resistance and came down. That's what you expect. You hit your head, you come back down, and you land. You don't fall through it. You land on your SMA. She did. We got a double tap. That gave us a push off. We got a climb there. She's coming back down and she is sitting on it. Best I can say, folks, is she is struggling to climb right now. And all we need is a little push. A little piece of news will be all we need to get this thing to ignite. But she has got value now. The reverse stock split and being an all-time low and the company having solid technology, it's not dead wood. People are going to come along and say, whoa. This thing's undervalued. I want some of this. And she'll start to climb. And when the chart gets into a position of looking like a breakout, we'll get more attention. When volume comes in, what's going to happen? Well, we've only got 1.7 million outstanding shares. I don't know what the float is and don't care. You sell 10 million shares in one day, you've sold every share over five times in one day. 
all the shares had to sell five times over, and that can give you some strong price stimulation. There's a lot more information to know about this company. Read up on it. It may get you more excited than I got you. <laughs> Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.